Hello and welcome to Conquering Alba, where we take you to the historical places that help make Scotland what it is today. Today we are in Lanark as we visit Douglas Castle. Douglas Castle was a stronghold of the Douglas family from the medieval times to the 20th century. The first castle was erected in the 13th century and was destroyed and replaced several times until the 18th century when a large mansion house was built in its place. This too was later demolished in 1938 and today only a single corner of the tower's 17th century castle remains. The tower that remains is three storeys high and nine metres in height. The tower once stood at the corner of an enclosure estimated to be around 40 metres across. The tower stands on a prominent rise in the valley to the south of the river and was retained as a garden folly when the later mansion was built. Below the tower is a small cellar block with glazed tiles on the interior walls. Nothing of the mansion remains visible. Sir Walter Scott used this location and early history of Castle Douglas as an inspiration for one of his novels, Castle Dangerous. The Douglas family built the first Douglas Castle, which was constructed of either wood or stone sometime before 1288. In 1307, during the Scottish Wars of Independence, the castle was captured and garrisoned by the English under Lord Clifford. Although the castle was retaken by the Scots under a man named Sir James Douglas. Sir James Douglas Known to his friends as Good Sir James, and to his enemies the Black Douglas, was a Scottish knight and feudal lord. He was one of the chief commanders during the Scottish Wars of Independence. When Sir James's land had been seized and awarded to Robert Clifford, Sir James was presented to the occupying English court to petition for the return of his land shortly after the capture of Stirling Castle in 1304. But when Edward I of England heard whose son he was, he grew angry and Douglas was forced to depart. It was not long after this where James Douglas swore his allegiance to Robert the Bruce.
In 1307, at the time Bruce's forces were hiding in the Carrick Hills near Turnbury, James Douglas thought permission to launch an attack on his own property of Douglas Castle, which was still in the hands of the English. Accompanied by only two men, James made his way to the ancestral estates in Douglasdale. Here he thought out Thomas Dixon, a loyal tenant who would have been known to him as a young boy. With Dixon's help, he recruited more of the local men in order to ambush the castle garrison. On Sam Sunday, while the garrison were attending church service, some of Douglas's men mingled with the congregation with others waiting outside. Although the attack started prematurely, Douglas was victorious in capturing or killing the entire garrison. Douglas and his men then retired to the castle where they sat down to a meal ready prepared for the garrison upon their return. After taking what was useful from the castle stores, the wells were poisoned and all remaining supplies were scattered across the cellars. The remaining prisoners were brought down and beheaded with their bodies joining those of their already deceased comrades on the pile of stores. The whole lot was then fired. This episode became known as the Douglas Larder. Although his actions may be considered barbaric, it must be kept in mind that it had been Edward, the English king, who had started the policy of killing any Bruce supporters out of hand, usually by hanging, drawn and quartering. Therefore, Douglas had to consider the safety of the local men who had remained behind. There must have been no one left to identify them. The castle was again reoccupied by the English, but James Douglas returned. He hid a large body of men near the castle and then sent a smaller party to drive off the cattle belonging to the garrison, which were grazing outside the castle walls. It is said that the castle's new commander rode out with an attacking force and the Scots quickly rode off in the direction of the ambush. The Scots came out of cover and chopped down the English army, who broke and fled to the safety of the castle. Most were killed before getting there. Douglas had not come to lay siege, therefore he and his force rode off leaving the English to retrieve their dead, including their new commander. Douglas made a third attack on his own castle again. This time he employed a ruse to draw out the English defenders. What appeared in the distance to look like a line of packed horses laden with hay, led by a country woman, were seen from the castle. 
Since fodder was running short for the castle's horses, a force set out to capture this baggage. On approaching closer, the figures threw aside the long enveloping cloaks to reveal an armed Scottish army. They dropped their bundles of hay, mounted their horses and turned to attack. A larger force, which once again was laying to waste, also emerged to join the fight. Once again the English were completely overwhelmed. Douglas this time having a greater body of men with him attacked the castle. Barber points out that the captain of the castle was Sir John of Webton. Found amongst his possessions was a letter from a lady who promised that if he could defend the adventures castle of Douglas for a year she would marry him. It seems that this triggered off the chivalrous side of Douglas as he permitted all the prisoners captured in the castle to depart to England unharmed. Then in line with King Robert of Bruce's policies, he raised his own castle to the ground to deny its use to the enemy, thus displaying his loyalty to his king. It was after these three attacks on Douglas Castle that James Douglas' reputation as a figure of terror was greatly enhanced. To the English, he seemed to appear from nowhere, wreak havoc and then disappear once again. It is from this the English dubbed him the Black Douglas. We hope you've enjoyed today's video here at Douglas Castle. Despite now being a ruin, it was once the home to Scotland's most underrated and most loyal commander, Sir James Douglas. And from his ancestral home to its ruin, he set himself out to be one of Scotland's greatest heroes. If you have enjoyed today's video, then please like and subscribe for more of Scotland's history. And until next time, Alba Gobra.